Now let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Ut que ant laxis, resonare fibris, mira gestorum, fali tuorum. Do you get this? This act, oh no. That's the earlier one. This is Guido of Arezzo. If you're Maria von Trapp, you sing, Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun, me and me. But they had ut que ant laxis. We changed it to Doe. I don't know who changed it to Doe. I don't think it's Rogers and Hammerstein, but, but I don't actually know when it dates from. But in the Middle Ages and Renaissance, their scale started from ut, re, mi, fa, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, re, ut. It only has six notes, which is a topic for another time. <clears throat> You need to know a little bit about this in order to fully appreciate the piece that we're singing tonight, this mass on any tone you please. It turns out to be only three tones, actually, but these are the tone ut and ut re mi fa sol la sol fa mi re ut, that scale, or mi re, sorry, re, Re, mi, fa, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, re, which is sort of like our minor. They have a third option, mi, fa, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, with mi, fa, mi. Mi, fa is always a semitone. It's not about pitch or notes, actually, but it's about the, si the scale. And in the Middle Ages and Renaissance, you could have pieces that ended on ut, re, or mi. Ray's the most common, and there are many, many plain chants, and other poly and polyphonic pieces as well, which end on Ray. So this is sort of like D minor. our final, and it's a lot like our minor scale, but you could also start here. And that note is oot. Ut re mi fa sol fa mi re ut, which is something like C major. Ut re mi re ut. And there's a third option in the Middle Ages, which is re mi, a final of mi with a fa semitone above it. Mi fa mi re mi but the chant doesn't necessarily start on me. That's fa me, and that's the characteristic end of a piece on the me scale and in the me mode. So Akagem sets out in this piece the cuius vis toni, it's a mass on any tone. Uh, he wants to, he will write polyphony that will work in any of those three scales. Now you could take perhaps any melody and just shift the scale. This is not like our transposition, right? If we say it's in where we are, this is or that's a re, this is Ray. We could say happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, or we could say happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. It's the same tune, but we want to actually shift the whole mode of it, change the scale, change the sound. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Johannes. Happy birthday to you. It might be his birthday, for all we know. <laughs> we could change, so that's the scale on oot. Happy birthday to oot, oot. Or we could sing it in minor, so this is as if it were on re. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Johannes. Happy birthday to you. That one's for Rages. They're all called Johannes, as it turns out. Now we could also sing it to the mode that we don't really have anymore, the one on me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Johannes. Happy birthday to you. That's for Bach. <laughs> Now, if you turn to the title page of your program, just inside the cover, you will see the music for the top part, the cantus part, for the Kyrie of the Mass we're going to sing. And you will see um, in the upper left corner, there's something, it's not a clef, but there's this little sign. And the little sign that tells you not what pitch you're on or what the note is, but this is what note you should, this is the tone you start on. We're all starting on the same tone in this piece, as it turns out, and you pick whatever tone you want and then sing the tune in that mode. So follow along. We're going to sing it first in mm, oot, oot. Akagem, like Bach, writes great melodies as well as astonishing counterpoint. Thank you, Margo. Next, Martin will sing it on Re. and it also works on me. And not just the singer on the top part, but the singer on every one of the four parts is doing the same trick. And making some very careful decisions along the way about exactly what notes to sing, because you want to alter some of them chromatically depending on context. <clears throat> and I think they were very, very quick studies. And it, we also imagine that this piece was not written for publication and to send out across Europe via Shermer, you know, it was uh, written probably first and foremost for Akagem and his singers to sing. So one of our uh, gentlemen here is impersonating Akagem this evening. <clears throat> so uh, we 
decided that it would perhaps be foolish and too long to sing the mass three times. <laughs> but we do want to hear parts of it uh, in different modes juxtaposed to get a sense of what an astonishing trick this is. I have given talks where I played first the Curie in me and said, this is Akigem at his most serious and profound and dark. And everyone listens, ah, oh, it's so beautiful. And now here he is at his cheeriest and light and beautiful. Did you notice that it was the same music, actually, just in a different mode? It's transformed by this uh, operation of changing the mode. So, uh, but if you listen for uh, gestures and uh, places where everyone is singing the same words at the same time versus these very fancy little contrapuntal moments that he also throws in, you may recognize parts of it as it goes by in the different modes. So we're going to sing the Agnus Dei first in all three. The Kyrie, sorry, we'll sing the Kyrie first in all three. First the Mi, and then the Re, and then the Ut. So from weirdest to minor to major. And then we'll proceed to the Gloria in Ut. And then we'll hear the Gloria again in Mi, followed by the Credo in Mi. And then we can all take a break and have intermission. Okay.